This right here is a pomegranate seedling. I started it from the pomegranates that I bought from the store and I planted several seeds but this is the only one that's doing good out of all the seeds that I planted. There were some that sprouted but not fully. You can see there's one over here, there's one over here, maybe if I break the... there we go. Um, I don't know if these will do anything. They've been like this for a while. Uh, but this pomegranate seedling is in this giant pot over here with this pineapple. It's dry because I let it dry before I planted it. And uh, it's been in here for uh, maybe like three months or so. This is my first time trying this. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work out. I might have to try a different one because this was already kind of dried and I watered it from the top because I was following instruction of another person who suggested from, to water it from the top and then I quickly realized that was a bad idea and it rotted the top and uh, the leaves on top um, were falling off and I had to remove them and these were the leaves that were left. I So far I haven't seen any growth on this one but uh, I'm just leaving it here because it still looks green and the leaves look sturdy so I'm hoping that it will do something uh, for me in the future. I don't know. But I planted so many things, little seedlings in here and none of them did well. A lot of them died because this window that's, uh, well, sorry, I have kids, so you're going to see stuff like that <laughs> no matter how much I clean up. <laughs> uh, so this window over here does not receive direct sunlight. It only received direct sunlight super early in the morning, uh, maybe until like 10 o'clock or so, and then after that there's no direct sunlight at all. All these things over here require direct sunlight. Most of the seedlings that I planted in here died. I tried parsley, I tried onions. I also had a rosemary that I transplanted from outside and I had it in here uh, uh, next to a different window in the house, same thing. I just don't have enough sunlight in this house uh, or direct sunlight. It's okay for house plants, but not okay for things that require direct sunlight. So I'm going to remove this pomegranate seedling over here and potting it up into this terracotta pot over here and taking it downstairs to my grow room so that it can receive enough sunlight. So let's go ahead and do that. I have this trowel over here. I'm going to try to dig deep so that I don't damage the roots of the pomegranate and hopefully uh, it will survive. And I have fertilized it a few times now just uh, with uh, about half, uh, whoops, with half strength fertilizer, just like uh, I would for any new seedling. There we go. Not, not much roots at this point. Is that a worm? Oh. What is that? What is that? Are these worms? Uh oh. So you can see this is the amount of fruits that it has right now. I think I saw some worms in here. I don't know if these are jumping worms that I t brought in from outside because I did put a rosemary in here or what. Hopefully they're not bad worms, but I don't see a lot of roots on this pomegranate and they were all around it, so I don't know. I'm gonna try to put it in here and bury it to as deep as where the white stem was. You can see kind of, if I, if I put it up like that, you can see where the white stem starts. So the white was underground and I'm gonna try to do that. And then I'm going to water it. So I'm just going to poke a hole and see. Okay, about this deep. So that means I need to bury some of the hole. There we go. Let's see. I can lift it up after. I think that's good. Was it about this much, this high? I think it was about this high. So now I'm gonna take it downstairs and I'm going to water it. And right now I'm just gonna water it. I'm not gonna give it any fertilizer. And then when I fertilize my seedlings, I'm going to fertilize it as well.
I'm going to need some sort of a saucer for this so I'm going to take one of my let's put it down first I'm going to take one of uh, these uh, trays that I just washed and and I want to put this pot inside this tray so that it can hold the water if any water drips and I'm gonna put the pot in here all these are used up all these these two shelves are used up so I'm going to put it on this shelf and lift these lights up I recently bought this watering can and it has this really nice end on it so this way I'm less likely to damage my seedlings when I water them Oops. I might have to fix that looks like I put some soil on it I'm just gonna press it down a little there we go and hopefully it will be okay any excess water is going to drip down and then I'll just take it out of this tray and dump it out so that it doesn't sit in this uh, moist water now uh, I don't think I watered it too much because this is a small seedling so it will rot if I give it too much water and I have to keep that in mind because this is a really large pot so I just have to water carefully and hopefully being down here with this these lights over here it's going to grow much quicker and be much healthier go ahead live your happy life it'll take this pomegranate about three years to become a healthy bush it will be too big to live under these lights it will be about from <laughs> the height of the bush from the soil level to um, as high as it could reach <laughs> it would be about uh, three to four feet so that would be too big to be in here I would have to put it upstairs and have either put it in front of the window or put direct light on it uh, but you can do this you can start pomegranate from seeds if you want a pomegranate tree but pomegranates pomegranates don't live in our area they can live from zone six and under and our hardy hardy pomegranates and pomegranates that live from zone eight and under so gotta be careful when you are buying a pomegranate and you live in colder zones if you are in zone six you want to get a pomegranate that can that can live in your environment and even then you want to protect it uh, put it in a sheltered area maybe up against the house where it would receive a lot of direct sunlight so that it does not uh, get killed by hard freezes if you have temperatures that would dip down below your normal uh, levels so you you have to keep that in mind like we did this winter for example we dipped down to minus 20 Fahrenheit and that's very unusual for us so if you live in zone 6 and your temperatures dip down to uh, let's say below minus 10 uh, or I don't know what kind of temperatures you guys get but you get what I'm saying uh, your pomegranate will die if you do purchase a pomegranate or if you start a pomegranate from seed like I did and plant it outside. Before we moved into this house I had a pomegranate tree that I also started from seed several years before we moved into this house but when we moved here I put it outside in around April we were having a false spring and that was my mistake I didn't know the area I didn't know what kind of weather we have and I put it outside because I thought oh the weather warmed up so I can move it outside now uh, but I was mistaken it got completely damaged and there was no coming back and it was I think it was about the year that it was ready to start producing fruits for me I had it for several years and it was growing to be a beautiful bush it's not a tree really it's more of a bush so uh, this pomegranate over here is going to take it about three to four years to start producing for me maybe a little bit longer depending on how on on its growth rate uh, so when you do grow fruits from seed uh, like uh, bushes or trees or anything like that you have to be patient with them because it's going to take them some time to produce 
uh, I just uh, took the again I took the seeds out of the pomegranate that I had uh, from the store I let it mature a little bit longer on the counter uh, I let the seed mature a little bit longer on the counter you can also have it mature inside the pomegranate fruit have it mature on the counter until it looks like it, it's about to rot but because now pomegranates are super expensive it's like four dollars for one pomegranate pomegranate uh, I just uh, I decided to use some of the seeds and let them ripen on their own and I planted them once they ripened in just regular potting soil you can plant them in some seed start starting uh, trays if you want to if you want to make if you want to more than one plant and I can't be sure what variety of pomegranate I'm going to be getting but I'm going to be getting a pomegranate because I honestly don't know what variety it is and I'm not sure if they also bear the same variety. It could be a hybrid type of pomegranate, it could be crossbred with something else and it could give me something um, from the parent um, variety that's different from the variety that I got from the store. I don't know. But regardless, they are beautiful and I love their flowers uh, that they make and I love the fruit, the way how it looks, it's beautiful. And I'm hoping to get some fruits out of it because we love pomegranates. And the health benefits of the po pomegranates are also huge. So I just want to have a pomegranate in my house. It's beautiful. And I grew up eating pomegranates, so I want to have one in my house. Now I'm going to water my seedlings. These seedlings over here don't seem like they... No, they do need water. These need water. And over here the... Uh, ginger also needs watering so I recently purchased this uh, water uh, sprayer with the pump system and, and I use these to spray outside uh, or either uh, spray p uh, organic pesticides on the tree on the trees or to spray herbicides in areas that I don't want anything to grow like the gravel or the driveway or anything like that but I have separate ones for each of these purposes and I was getting tired watering my seedlings with this spray bottle even though it is a continuous mister so I got this and now we are going to use it to water the seedlings with this uh, pump sprayer over here all I have to do is just pump it down and I already did you just pump it a little bit up and down a few times and then it's going to build up the pressure in the tank if you've never used one of these and I just take this one and I have it on a nice misting let me move this out first things are getting a little bit messy in here <laughs> There we go. I have it on mist and you can adjust uh, the mist with this head over here whether it's on um, jet or mist and I just it cuts down the watering time for me for, with about 50 percent and it's making my life so much easier <laughs> right now and I'm uh, all about and I'm all about making my gardening uh, easier and quicker because I have kids and we homeschool so I just want things to be super easy for me <laughs> and also uh, with the mister I wasn't able to let out as much water as this one lets out and you can see the unfortunate side effect of this though that it's spraying everywhere so I just take a paper towel or a towel and I wipe the back and the sides just so that I don't have this dirt sticking <laughs> up against the wall and water everywhere so I have control over how much water I put in here and I'm less likely to overwater things this way so this is this looks pretty good and the turmeric is still moist but the temperature is not going up over uh, 71 degrees 72 degrees in here on this heat thermostat because it is cold in here it's the temperature is about it ranges between the 50 and the 665 in here now I have to take care of these seedlings over here before I water them we're gonna snip them so that we can only so that we can have one plant in each of these trays so let's bring one down 
bring it down over here and we're gonna start snipping. <laughs> it looks like these seedlings are super dry, but when you are snipping, you want to, when you are snipping plants off, you wanna look for the healthiest plants to keep and the weaker plants to snip off. That goes without saying. I should have watered these earlier this morning, but I wanted to show you how I water my seedlings also, so I just left them for now i think with this one i'm gonna keep these two because just in case if one of the plants that are just growing one in in their cells are not doing super great so i'm gonna snip the weaker ones off like this one over here looks like it has a kind of curly leaf on it so i don't want that and you just snip them close to the surface of the soil with this one I have two over here that are super close to each other so I'm just gonna leave this one and you just have to kind of be ruthless and this is really hard for me because I don't like to get rid of plants I like to keep all plants and all plants deserve a chance to live oh look at this one this has no that's two seedlings I thought it was I thought it had two uh, stems on it. So I'm going to keep these two and then we'll see which one does better. It looks like this one is going to do better, but we'll decide after. So let's go ahead and snip the longer ones first. Hmm. It's such a tough choice. Which one? Which one do I keep? This looks healthier than the rest of them. I'm gonna keep this one also and snip this there. We'll leave two in this cell. Same here. I'm just gonna leave two in each of the cells if I can. If I can't, that's all right. Like these two are super close together, so I'm gonna leave this one and snip this one off. Leave these two. And these two for now. Let's go ahead. And I'm just gonna leave them on the surface of the soil. It doesn't matter, they're not gonna hurt anything. Some of them I can only keep one just because they're not super healthy or they're super close together like these. Um, these two are okay, they're not super close. The one in the middle looks the healthiest, or these two over here. We'll see. Decisions, decisions. <laughs> so now these are all snipped and we're just gonna water them. And I'm going to give them a good soak because they're super dry. I shouldn't have let this happen, but it did. Now you might be wondering why I don't bottom water my seedlings, and that's because they are still super small and I don't want them to be sitting in their trays and getting soaked and having a uh, possible uh, dampening off which is when the seedling rots at the bottom and then your once that happens your seedlings will die and also I don't want to have any algae that's growing on the surface of the soil because when you do have a lot of moisture and you have light then you'll end up with algae or any mold or anything like that. For now this is how I water them. When I do fertilize them I fertilize them from the top. I just uh, fill the watering can with a half strength fertilizer and I fertilize them over 
the top uh, with that uh, fertilizer. Once they grow, then I start fertilizing bottom fertilizing. And I do that for all my seedlings. I uh, don't like to uh, bottom fertilize at this stage because their roots haven't uh, reached down to the surface and they are not very good at absorbing water from the wicking mat at this stage. Uh, once they start getting roots, then that would be easier for them to absorb uh, water from the wicking mats. I'm also noticing that some of the cells are not absorbing water, even when I do fill the water reservoir uh, at the bottom with water. I'm noticing that some of the cells are not absorbing that water. Maybe it's because I haven't tamped it down fully where the soil is reaching the bottom, or maybe because my wicking mat, there's it's old and I need to change it. I don't know, but there is sometimes that happens. And I always have like uh, one or four of the cells that just don't tend to absorb water. Let me give you a quick update on the onions and see where they're at right now. This is one tray of the yellow sweet Spanish onions and I planted uh, six or seven onions in each of uh, these trays. I have two of them, one over here and one over here and they're starting to emerge and uh, so far I have about two or three in each cell and I'm just going to leave this covered until most of them germinate and with uh, red onions over here it looks like most of them have germinated so I think I'm about ready to remove this I'm just gonna leave it for maybe a day or two this dome and then I'll remove it but if I notice that it looks like these are bending so maybe I should just remove it now um, yeah I think we're just gonna take this off right now because these onions look like they're getting squished. So let me set the camera down. That's better. This way they could just grow and stretch out. And uh, once they reach about six inches, then I'll trim them down and I'll just keep doing that until I'm ready to plant them outside and this is another tray of the yellow sweet Spanish onion and again again same thing I have between one to three seedlings emerging in each of the cells and these are a second year uh, se these are second year seeds so I'm hoping that I will get a whole lot of them that most of them will germinate because these are older seeds, it is uh, a little bit harder to uh, have uh, um, like 100 to 90 percent germination rate. With onions, there the seed germination rate starts dropping at the second year. After the second year, it, it starts dropping dramatically. You might still have some germinate, but uh, if um, if you store them properly, you might have a little bit of them germinate or more than that. And uh, by properly, I mean in a cool and dry environment. I store my seeds in plastic containers and I did a video on seed organization. You can see how I store my seeds. There's one more thing that I want to show you and that is my lavender cuttings that I took from outside in the fall. So let's check on these. I just brought these down here uh, because they were in front of that window where I had the uh, pomegranate in the same place and I um, I felt like they just they weren't growing their best because they weren't receiving enough sunlight and anything that's not receiving enough sunlight and loves the sun is not going to grow to its full potential so I brought them down here even though over here is colder uh, I feel like it's better for them because they are going to be under these grow lights and they're going to receive all the sunlight that they need from these lights <laughs> there they are you can see they're starting to put on new growth. I have some dead ones but I'm leaving them <laughs> in there just as a marker that uh, I shouldn't plant anything here just to stop myself tempting, tempting myself that I need to plant something in here because I'm that way. <laughs> and uh, you can start seeing that uh, most of them are putting on new growth. Look at this. And this is a sign when your plants or when your cuttings start putting on new growth that's a sign that you're starting to have root de developments happening and I have been fertilizing them with a half strength fertilizer 
and uh, I watered them this morning because uh, they were drying out Bec but because lavender does not like to sit in damp soil after I watered them I uh, tilted the tray like this so that they don't sit in the excess water that's in here and uh, this way uh, they would just have the water that they have in here and they're not sitting in this excess moisture and I have been also putting this dome over them because we have the fan over here uh, that can const constantly this oscillating fan that blows uh, the fan that blows wind on these seedlings and I don't want my cuttings to dry out and uh, with cuttings you have to make sure that they stay moist all the time with uh, their not just the roots but also the leaves because if they do dry out then uh, your cuttings are going to die. That's why when you uh, do cuttings you either put a dome on them, a humidity dome, uh, or you wrap them with a plastic shrink wrap or something like that, uh, or you have to constantly mist them. Uh, with my fiddle leaf fig right now that I uh, took a cutting from, and I did a video on that a few weeks ago, I have been misting it several times a day just to make sure that, that, f that the, all the leaves don't uh, start to uh, die and the cutting then would have a uh, less likelihood of surviving uh, so I just uh, missed it about four to five or even I don't know ten times a day sometimes depending on how dry the air inside the house is and uh, it's doing great and it started developing some roots so I'm super super excited about that and this is like what two three weeks now I think and it's doing great. It's just that the top is kind of bending a little bit. So once I plant it, I can correct it and uh, see what I can do with it. Or maybe I could just cut the top off and propagate that. <laughs> and um, I don't know. Or just have it, you know, it will branch up, on, branch out on the top. I don't know. So now I have to finish these seedlings over here, finish uh, snipping them off, and I have to water them as well. But uh, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you are new here and you like these types of videos, hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos. And spring is at the door. It's coming. Yes, there's snow outside, but it's melting and we are waiting pat patiently for spring. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.